Everybody clap for Chris and Michelle doing the sound every week. Greatly unappreciated. One of those jobs. So thank you very much. Say Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Kimmy. Jesus loves you. <laughs> so hey, good week. Windy week. Been uh, out here on the prairie anyways. Very rainy, windy. How many of you went to the fair this week? How many of you volunteered at the fair? Made the church some money. So thank you very much for those of you that did. And we'll do that again. Next year, didn't have any horror stories. Nobody slipped into the fryer or broke a finger or anything or cut off a finger, uh, which I have a scar, I can tell you, when I cut myself <laughs> really well back when I was a chef. But, so we are blessed for that, and I thank all of you that participated. And then the other reminder, I know I've told you all, I'm putting the bulletin and stuff, that today uh, we're playing at the Old Rugged Cross Church at 6, but I was wrong. And so we're playing at the old Rugged Cross Church at three o'clock. And so what I didn't realize was that uh, every week apparently they have the hymn sing out there. All of them anyways. And the hymn sing is what's at six o'clock and the bands and the concerts that they have on a regular basis are at three o'clock. And so if you've never been to the old Rugged Cross Church, uh, then that's a good time to go out there. It's beautiful, the Schaefer Twins. Uh, one of which was my little league coach, and I played baseball with his boys. They uh, have worked very hard at uh, uh, rebuilding that church. And it's very nice, and it's what it was. There's a little museum in the back, so if you all come out, we'll sing together, and it'll be a nice afternoon. And so, I'm trying to think, though. So after church today, I think uh, for those of you that haven't been a member of a Methodist church and aren't sure what's going on, or if you have questions for me as a member, we're having a class, and it'll be in the air conditioning in the classroom in there, uh, but I'll explain to you how the Methodist church works and what we're doing here, and um, 
make that as brief as possible. Mm -hmm. I have things written out, so uh, really, we'll read through it, and I'll answer any questions you have right now that it's really meant uh, for me to explain some things, and then for you to take that home and do more research on your own, and look things up to gain a better understanding, and then come back with more questions that I can answer individually for what you need. And so, uh, once again, if you uh, go on that path, if you're a new member, then please stay after church and we'll go through that. Also, just, uh, you know, my meeting, there's some confusion. My meeting with the district superintendent, who is my boss, is tomorrow morning at 10. And so keep me in your prayers. But uh, this church, the Forge Prairie Church, it's had relatively a few new members for decades. Uh, when I wrote down the names to report to him, uh, this church has over 30 new members eight baptisms this year in the church it has had uh, like uh, talking to the old time members had one in the past 10 or 15 years and so uh, just share that with you because god is at work amen, amen. and uh, but always remember and kind of what the sermon's about today if god's at work what does that mean that means you have to be at work too right this isn't just you sit down and god does everything for you this is uh, god put you to work no people laugh at me because if you're around me for too long, I'll find something for you to do. Uh, but that's exactly how God works, too. There you go. So uh, that's my announcements. Brian, you got prayers for mom? Yep. So Marie's not feeling good this morning, so prayers for her. And we have Tanya in the back. Um, I just wanted to let everyone So the women's meeting is a week ahead. Do you know what day that is? The 11th. Yep, 9-11, so. 5.30. We already have food planned out. Uh, and I know we'll be making a craft, or not a craft. What is that? It's a bag for, for what is the bag for again? For the Shell. youth. For, for the youth. For the apple yes, festival. the youth parade. <laughs> the apple festival. We'll be making little giveaway gifts. So we're, uh, ladies are meeting on the 11th at 5.30. Is that correct? Yes. Making bags. So, so that's another thing. Uh, we're going to be involved on Youth Day for the Apple Festival. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, this church has never been involved in the Apple Festival in any way, shape, or form. So that's another wonderful ministry, getting the, the word of the Lord out there most importantly, but us continuing to be active. So uh, always remember, we need... All these activities aren't just other people, that we are the church, amen? And so that we all need to be involved, and if you can't be there uh, physically to help out, see if there's anything you can buy, some money you can donate so that uh, you can get the job done where God's calling us. So, thank you. What do you have, Marsha? Uh, $600 was made uh, with the bake sale, so thanks for everybody that baked and all helped right. out at the farmer's market okay we got rained out but we we sold then that the bluegrass and then next the next sunday morning the, so six hundred dollars good yes michelle yeah so vivian our dear sweet vivian still hurt she uh lisa just had her shoulder done so that's what Vivian's looking to get done next. She had the cancer surgery, and that's going, the healing from that is going well, but her shoulder's killing her most of the time. And so uh, keep her in your prayers. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bobby. Yes, sir. I see my niece today. All right. I told her to come out here. This is church here. Mm -hmm. I told her to come out here. All right. So Brian's going to see his niece today, so that's good. And he's talking about evangelizing. Wherever we go, we speak for the Lord. Amen. And and uh, one of the best ways to do that is just invite people to church. So uh, hopefully you love coming out here to Forge Prairie, that you're proud of that, and that we have a good fellowship here, that we love each other, take care of each other. And uh, so uh, just should always be inviting and serving. So we'll bow our heads in prayer, have our opening prayer, then we'll sing some songs for the glory of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning here on the prairie. Uh, 
uh, surrounded by your creation, the reminders of growth. And each of us as we sit here is growing in the Lord, that we are called to grow, we are called to serve, uh, that we are all part of your great harvest. We just pray your blessing upon this service. It is, uh, glorifies your blessed and holy name. All that we read, all that we speak, all that we sing, uh, that it is not fake, that it is real, that it is from our hearts to your hearts. The John 17 prayer of Jesus that uh, we take seriously and so important. Uh, we pray for our friends at home that are watching this. Uh, we know that there are many uh, that would like to be here but can't for different reasons. And we pray your spirit into their homes, into their hearts, and that you bring them back. And we just uh, know that we are blessed to be your children, that as we live here in America, uh, that you are with us, that we live a better life, a more blessed life than anyone in the history of the universe. And let us always be humble. Let us always be grateful. Let us always be strong in your spirit and know that all of these blessings, the great ones and the smallest ones, come from you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen.
been reading and watching a lot of videos and stuff. It all goes back, there's only one hope, only one truth, amen? Uh, you can be as nice as you want. I can tell you, when I'm out talking to people uh, that believe in Jesus, but they're, they're, the first mo thing I hear the most is, I'm nice. So uh, how many nice. people, yeah, and the, how many people do you meet that say, I'm mean, I'm very unpleasant, and I have met some uh, that are honest about that. Uh, but most people think they're very nice. But the truth is, nice doesn't get you into heaven, amen? We all fall short of the glory of God, and there's only one way to heaven. There is only one truth, and it is through Jesus. And so that song is just so true. And, uh, that is our hope. So. I like the way a spirit feels my soul at the start of every day. Now I want to pray with you on the prairie tonight with a billion stars. I got a peaceful, easy feeling. And I know you won't let me down. Cause I'm already standing on higher ground.
So, how many of you have been to Portage Prairie Methodist Church before? So, uh, I'm going to explain to you once in a while, try to do a little bit of everything here. And so, uh, but don't do a whole lot of worship yeah. tunes because we don't, most worship tunes, if you listen to them, especially nowadays, it's mostly just rhythm tracks. And then the other thing that goes with it is a synthesizer that just plays in the background and gets louder and softer throughout the song. And then an electric guitar that does not play much, just kind of carries a note through the whole thing. And you're uh, doing acoustic music here. And so it is very different than anywhere else. Uh, so we don't do a lot of those songs, but uh, the Lord really put on my heart to uh, do this song this Sunday. I'm not sure why, but uh, like I uh, talk to you guys all the time, just to do as you're told. Amen. I may you when you're being raised by your parents that uh, just do what you're told. Quit asking questions. And so I know I heard that a lot, uh, but it's the truth. We're servants of God who's in charge. That's a lesson that society, our American society, has lost. And so that's why there's so much conflict. But anyways, so we're going to do this song of very popular. And it'll be a little bit different because we're doing it. Maybe we only practiced it a couple times. <laughs> Dance for you, Jesus, so in all of you be still. 
awesome day that will be. Children, go where I send thee. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Good. All right. Well, I wanted to ask you. How are you guys? Thanks for coming up. All right. So um, I wanted to first off start off by asking, do you guys have a favorite team? Any, like anything, any college or... NBA or hockey, any, does anyone have a favorite team? Anyone? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Oh, all righty. <laughs> Red Wings. Do you have a favorite team? Here, we can scoot over. Red Wings, White Bryce. <coughs> Red Wings is your favorite team. All right, so, um, all right, so this is, this is my favorite team. Can you hold on to this? So this is my favorite team. Yep. Oh. So. Um. All right. So. Um. Thank you, Presley. So when I was in school, man, I was razzed a lot. I mean, razzed an awful lot. And um, the one. I, and I, I. I have to tell this. So anyway, um, I'll never forget my freshman year. And this uh, junior basketball player came up to me, and he was like 6'2". I mean, he was huge. And he goes, hey, Campy, did you hear the news? And I'm like, man, I, what are you talking about? What, 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 you know, what, what, do you, what do you need to tell me? He said, well, your favorite coach died. And I'm like, get out. I said, D you know what, that's not even funny. He goes, no, seriously, Bear Bryant passed away. And I'm like, <laughs> man, that was just mean. And so anyway, but just the way he said it. And so anyway, but um, and a true story, that really was. And I'll never forget that was my freshman year in high school. And uh, But anyway, but no, I was razzed an awful, awful lot for being an Alabama fan. Still am. And um, people, people wonder or ask me why. And everyone always thought, well, it's because they win all the time. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay. So anyway, um, so, so anyway, but but truthfully, um, those that those that really know me know that I have a special aunt and uncle that live in Alabama, and they're very, very, very dear to me. So that's why um, I have um, fond memories of going there at Thanksgiving time, and of course, the Iron Bowl was always played around that time, and we always happened to be in Alabama when they when they were playing in the Iron Bowl. So anyway, so truthfully, that's why I'm such a fan, is because of my aunt and uncle. So another thing that I'm a fan of, Cressy, I'm gonna have you hold on to my mic again. Okay, I want um, if you guys will grab each one of those. So another kind of people find it kind of scary is when you hold up this. When you hold up the cross. And why are people scared when you hold up the cross? Any ideas? Any? Okay, Miss Tanya says because some people are afraid of change. Um, some of the ideas that I wrote down is that um, just like my favorite team, it might might make people angry. Um, they may not belong to a different faith or not belong to one at all. So it's the unknown. Um, there are also several, several places in the world that if you are a Christian, 
like pastor says in his sermons they truly kill you mm -hmm. for being a christian um you know like pastor was saying in the in the multiple sermons and i'm sure he'll say it today <coughs> that it is truly um it is truly our job to talk to people about Christianity and to let them know that there is a God that truly, truly loves you and that is always there for you and that wants to have a relationship with you. And I know, I, um, guys, I know I say this an awful, awful lot, but I, I just, I really, really, really want you to realize the importance of, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, if it's not simply just thanking God for everything that you have, or if it's something that you're needing to talk to him about because something has made you unhappy or you just don't know what decision to make, he, I promise you, will lead you in the right direction. So being a fan of God needs to be a really big deal. So we can cheer on our teams. We can have a favorite player. We can, but um, I want you to, to realize that um, God wants you on his team. And God wants you to always, always cheer for him. What I'd like to read to you is from Matthew 10, verse 22. And this says, um, all men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Another thing that pastor says on a regular basis is that he wants his friends, he wants his family, he wants, Jesus wants everyone in heaven. He truly, truly does. Don't give Satan the satisfaction of living a life that's pleasing to Satan because it's just gonna be a really, it, I, I just, I don't, I don't even wanna think about what that world or what that life would be like. Um, that is why we that is why we must be prepared to hold up the cross and show we support team Jesus and we'll do it until the end of our lives. I really thank you guys for coming up. We're going to go ahead and say a prayer and Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that you give us each and every Sunday to spend as a Christian family. We thank you for allowing us to be on your team. I hope and pray that not only the children, but the adults here will be on your team and not be afraid to share your word, to work in a life that is pleasing to you, helping others, loving others, and most of all, supporting one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nice message, but remember that Albion comes after Al. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your bullet.
bulletins, would you please join me in unison for our liturgy this morning? I am a Christian. By the merciful love of God our Father, my soul is saved. By the selfless sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross and his resurrection, I am going to heaven. The Holy Bible instructs me, the Holy Spirit guides me. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are the fruit of my spiritual transformation. As I dwell in the Lord and He dwells in me, may all that I say, do, and think bring glory to the kingdom of God. I now commit my life as a living sacrifice in never-ending prayer, praise, and service. To the, the Father, Father, Son, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello again, sir. So, we're in Colossians 3. Last week we talked about being a good husband, being a good wife, getting along, all that stuff. Even in Christian homes, half the people get divorced. So it's important. It's important to be a team. It's important to define roles. It's important to love each other. Even if doing all that can often be difficult. Amen? Amen. So in uh, Colossians 3, starting in verse 18, it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. And do not be harsh with them. So, uh, and like I say, when you're reading Galatians and other Ephesians, uh, says to husbands to love your wives the way Jesus loves us. And so you should be very Christ-like, sacrificial. And, uh, all those words that you use to describe how Jesus loves you are the words that your wife should use to how you describe, or are the words that she should use to describe how you love her. Period. So uh, we have children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. And so uh, for those of you that have kids, grandkids, all that kind of stuff, I know these are different times uh, working in the schools. Uh, you know, the kids are very full of themselves. The kids are more than ready to argue with the teachers and uh, say that they're right and what do the teachers know and it can be very disrespectful but on the other side of that there are also uh, plenty of awesome kids and plenty of kids uh, that are respectful and are working hard and uh, do make the world a better place and so uh, we're going to skip to the next verse here but i just want to comment on this one today uh, that uh, you often hear that you know all these kids are so bad and that's just not the truth and uh, mostly in the nile school systems and uh, this year, I'd like to say I'll be starting out at the high school, uh, but uh, there's a lot of good kids there. And so, but uh, it all comes down to who's raising them, right? And then at the school, who's in charge? And what do they expect from those kids? And uh, so depending on what school system you're in and what they're teaching, what they're allowing, what their focus is, uh, that has a lot to do with how those children uh, grow, how they mature. We're going to look at this next thing today, uh, the next passage, which is verse 22. It says, Bond servants obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And so, uh, the word bond servant there sometimes depend on your Bible to say slave or servant, uh, just regular old servant. Uh, but we're going to talk about that today as just uh, being a worker. And I know many of you are retired, but so uh, apply this to where you volunteer, apply this to where you go, uh, apply this to uh, any interaction you have where you may be in service. You know, every Thursday we're down at the table, invite all of you to come down there to the community table. And so to help us serve or just to be with people, be part of the family down there. And so uh, these words that the Bible writes are important. 
because uh, when you go to work, you're not just representing yourself, right? You are a Christian. Everywhere you go, everything, every place that you are, everyone you interact with, uh, do they know you're a Christian? And the answer is, they should. That should be one of the first things out of your mouth is that they know that you're a Christian because how long should it take for you to begin to talk about God, to invite them to accept the Lord, to repent, to come to church? Uh, that is our calling. Amen? Amen. And so these words that this has here, that uh, Paul writes here, Whatever you do, work heartily for the Lord and not for men. So, how many of you have ever put a roof on? How many of you have ever painted a house for someone? How many of you have ever, uh, I don't know, helped lay carpet? Whatever you do. And we'll go back to the serving the food because that's the easiest example. But you stand there and, and you're at work. Uh, you know, we'll use Donita as an example. She worked at the meat, uh, putting the meat out at Myers for a long time. And so that might seem like a mundane job. How, Pastor, how can I put meat out for the Lord? And uh, that's a valid question. But uh, as you're there, as you're at work, you represent the Lord. Amen. Your work ethic is very important. The words that you speak. So when you go to church on Sunday and then you go out into the world and you go to work and you cuss a lot at work and you tell dirty jokes, uh, are you being a Christian at work? And the answer is no. If you go to your job and you're one, you say, I'm a Christian, and you're one of the laziest people there, are you representing God? An important question to ask is, uh, how hard did Jesus work? I don't know if you've ever thought about it. How many days a week did Jesus take off? And the answer is that he did take days off. You know, he went away to pray. He told the apostles, the disciples, you stay here. I need some time away from you. I need to go pray. I need some quiet time. I need some time to rest. And so all of these things add up. All of these things, uh, being a worker, being a Christian worker is different than just being someone who goes to work. And But it should apply to all that we do. It should be who we are as a person. And so the things we read in the Bible... Uh, Jesus was a hard worker. Jesus was disciplined. Amen. And uh, But we are always tempted to do the ungodly thing, right? And so uh, we see that Job was tempted by Satan. We know that Job uh, was God's really chosen person. I don't know if you ever think about it, but as Satan came up to God and said, how's it going? God told Satan to go see Job to talk to him, to tempt him, and certainly Satan did. And when everything was bad, when things weren't going his way, uh, when Job lied out in the street with boils from his head to feet, uh, did he remain faithful to God? And the answer is yes. And so we know that when we go to work, we know that when we volunteer, we know that when we go to these places out in the community, uh, that we are representatives of God. If we're really strong in the spirit, if we're going there intentionally knowing that God is calling us to speak and to represent him, uh, certainly Satan's going to send people there to try to defeat us. Amen? And so I know a lot of, some of you go to like the senior centers and you go to other things with your friends. We had the ladies go into the, uh, see the comedian this week. And I just want to put on your hearts as you go as a, a ladies group that you're also a Christian ladies group. So I'm hoping things don't get too wild while you guys are together. And so looking forward to hearing how that went. And so when you are in these situations, uh, how many of you ever had a job or you had one, two, or three people that you just could not get along with? They were not pleasant people. They weren't nice people. They lied. They, uh, some people, I know I worked with one guy and uh, when I was a chef and it was interesting. We were cooking this guy was always busy. He was always like wiping the counter and he was always going and back and then coming back out on the cook's line and then going and back and then, uh, but perpetual motion. But when it came time to cook and do stuff, uh, he didn't do much. He just looked busy all the time. He never really did much. And so it was very interesting. And I learned an important lesson from, uh, in being a boss, I learned an important lesson from him that uh, when it came time for the rubber to hit the road, uh, he wasn't getting it done. And the other people that 
were taking a break while things were slow, were much more active when it came time to do the actual work. And so that is us. And so uh, I bring all these things to your attention because they're in the Bible and because of the times we live in. How many of you watch the news, see the television? I don't know what news you watch, but I know at this point that's very important to what you see and what you believe. Uh, but we know, like I've talked about, the kids in Chicago that pillaged the 7-Eleven or whatever it was. And we have people just going into stores and taking whatever they want. They feel they don't have to work for anything. <laughs> that they are entitled to an apartment. They are entitled to a car. They are entitled to food. And people need to just give them things. A long time ago, I talked to a lady, and, and she told me, quite frankly, that she shouldn't have to work because there's enough rich people in the world and they should just pay for whatever she wants. But my question for you is, see how well you know your Bible, uh, where does God first initiate that people need to work for what they have? And you know, it's in Bible study, so I'm not gonna wait for somebody to answer, but it's in Genesis 2. <laughs> so, so that I get it right, I'll read here. Uh, when God created Adam, right, and he put him in the Garden of Eden, he created the Garden of Eden, he put Adam in the Garden of Eden, and then he says to cultivate and to keep it. So from the very beginning, I don't know what your picture of the Garden of Eden is, but it isn't Adam just walking through and having everything done for him. He, Adam was a farmer from the very beginning. He had to work. And so God has created us not just to sit here and receive, God has created us from the very, very, very beginning to work. It is healthy, it is good. Uh, you know that most people, if you become depressed, if you become melancholy, what's one of the first things you do? You just sit, you don't do anything. And it's a sign of mental unhealthiness. And it's also when Satan begins to get to you. It's when uh, those dark thoughts, I don't know how many people you know that have committed suicide or how many books you've read, articles, and how much you know about it, uh, but many of those people have been shut down for a long time and they stay in their rooms and then uh, because they're not active, because they're not busy, because they quit their jobs, because they're just sitting there and not doing the things that God created us to do, uh, that that's when Satan gets a hold of them and leads them to their earthly death. And so this work ethic that should be a Christian work ethic, a Christian work, work ethic should not be just to do things, but to do things with joy, to have the joy of the Lord in your heart as you do them. And so as you think about your job or how you used to live, when, if you're retired, when you used to work, did you have the joy of the Lord in your heart? Were you able to share that? How many conversations did you have about Jesus, about love, about church? while you were at work. And uh, the famous saying of what would Jesus do, you know, uh, you know, like I'm teaching again this year at the high school, uh, I need to check myself. I need to think about myself. If Jesus was doing the job I'm doing, what would his attitude be? What would his work ethic be? You know, in uh, putting the meat out on display and doing all those things at Myers, how would Jesus do that? How would he use that time? And whatever you're doing, you know, uh, do you represent the Lord? Would it be, are you Christ-like in your approach, in your heart? And when we look at the Bible, like I say, uh, often say, Jesus, uh, Christians, to me in large part, have it wrong. We think we have a church, we go to church, and then we and just invite people to church. But I tell you always, Jesus was out in service, amen? Jesus was out preaching and evangelizing, amen? If we're going to be Christian, we have to be Christ-like. We are to be apostles. We are to be disciples and learn, and we are to be apostles out in the community, serving, helping, spreading the word, saving souls. And so as we uh, continue, uh, when I do sermons like this, I will always ask you, what is this church known for? What is the main focus of this church? And uh, at this point, we still don't have that, but as we continue to grow, I put that question on all of your hearts. And we always are looking for ways to serve, new ministries, new people to reach. 
But when we look at work in the Bible, I told you about Adam. From the very beginning, God created us to work, to take care of the soil, to be farmers. And then we look at Noah. How long did it take Noah to build that ark with his sons? Because he didn't hire people. He didn't go to Lowe's and get the boards all done. He had to build that ark by himself. And uh, uh, the Bible tells us it's roughly 100 years. So if God called you to start building an ark right now, count on living another hundred years but you'd be busy the whole time trying to get that thing done and so uh, but once again how much work was that if you've been i know not many of you have been down to cincinnati to see the art but that thing's huge and i can't even imagine you know just a few guys building that by hand that had to be amazing but it had to have been hard work also and so we have noah then we have the passage that I've told you before, the passage that you rarely hear, but it's in the Bible, but it's very important. Uh, you know, Paul was bivocational because he didn't want people to think he was being a pastor just for the money. And so he was a tent maker. And so when we go to 2 Thessalonians 3.10, which is in your programs there, uh, it says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. And so if you think about our society today, and you think about the Bible, and you think about Paul, and you think about these groups of people, if you go back in history, if you know your history, it is very much the truth. If a man doesn't work, he does not eat. If you're a farmer and your crops don't turn out, what happens? Either you have nice neighbors that feed you, or you starve to death. And so it's just another example of we're not created to just take we're created to work we're created to give we're created to serve and that is what keeps our hearts and our minds godly and healthy and so the examples i have here the, the next two are very important because we have joseph right and joseph ends up being the right hand man in egypt he's not even an egyptian but how does he end up there because he's very intelligent because he's a hard worker because his brothers sell him, they take him to Egypt, and he, he works his way up through the government. He answers, uh, the, the Pharaoh has uh, visions, and Joseph's able to pray, and God tells him what those visions are. <coughs> and then we know that he ends up in prison because Potiphar's wife uh, wanted to have sex with him, but he refused. And so she made up the story, had him put in prison, and then uh, they call him back out to interpret some more visions and dreams. And then he ends up uh, being in charge of most of the country. And so the, the message there is, at any turn in that story, Joseph could have been mad at God. Joseph could have been mad at Potiphar. He could have just held on to his anger at Potiphar's wife and said, forget these Egyptians, you know, I don't want anything to do with them. When they came back and asked, for him to interpret the dreams, he could have said, I don't want anything to do with you because you guys don't treat me nice, because you guys have hurt me, because you threw me in prison and I'm innocent. But that's not his heart, amen? He went back to work. He did what they asked, and then he was rewarded because even in the dark times, even when we don't understand, God is with us. God is at work. And so then the next time we see this, we have Daniel. In the book of Daniel, the same thing. They get exiled, and Nebuchadnezzar uh, says, go out and choose the smartest, the brightest, the, the great athletes amongst the Jews, and bring them, and we'll train them up. And once again, Daniel, like Joseph, is able to uh, pray to God and, and interpret dreams for Nebuchadnezzar. But at every turn, these people that God is using to change the world. These stories will never be forgotten. Joseph, Daniel, Paul will never be forgotten. They are examples to us every day. When we know our Bible, when we read our Bible, these names are important. They are on the tips of our tongues. And they're not just stories. They're not made up. They're not Aesop's fables. They are real people. They are people that God called, but God wants to save souls. God wants to change the world. God wants to redeem the world, uh, justify the world, bring them all home. But he needs us. 
and he needs his children and the children he created and uh, this laziness epidemic that's overturning the world, overtaking our country especially, which used to be known as a very hardworking country and now with the younger folks, uh, they think they just deserve everything. And it's not 100%, but it is too many as we see. Uh, I want you to see in this dysfunction that it's not just the kids going astray, not just the kids going awry. This is ungodly. This is what happens when you turn away from God. When you read Matthew 24, when you read uh, the book of Revelation, it talks about the chaos. And surely people running in the stores and just taking all that they want and throwing it out in the streets and stealing and not getting prosecuted and not getting arrested and other people having to pay for everything that they do certainly leads to chaos. And that is, I want you to know, that is not God's plan. It has never been God's plan, and it never will be God's plan. So Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And so for those of you that still work, even if it's part-time, for those of you that volunteer anywhere, I want you to, especially over the next few weeks, to keep this on your heart. When you go to whatever you're doing, and I'm as guilty as anybody for sure, I'm not doing this. Uh, when you're going to do something, you're not going to serve men. So if you're painting a house, if you're putting on a roof, if you're putting meat out, whatever your job may be, for that day. I know Kimmy and Brian go to get the bread that we pass out. You guys do that every week? Yeah. So yep. they go up to St. Joe every week with Tom and pick up a bunch of bread and bring it back. And uh, we give that out throughout the community. And so, but uh, to Kimmy and Brian, who are wonderful people, but when you do that, you're driving with Tom. But I want you, as an example to everyone else, uh, you're doing that for the Lord. Amen. Amen. That God is with you. and. Uh, even if you get a flat tire, it's okay, right? Because right. you're doing God's work right. and he's still with you. Yes. Uh, Deb, on all the stuff she does for us online, uh, I don't know what your heart is, but uh, we thank you. And, uh, you know, you can uh, think I'm doing this and I'm doing that, but uh, I want all of us to have in our hearts that all we do, everywhere we go, we represent God and God is with us. And I think it makes for a whole different world, for a whole different perspective, for a whole different understanding, especially when we're out talking to people about these things. Uh, if you know from this day forward, if you didn't know about Adam being created to till, I mean, just remember, <laughs> Adam was created to be a farmer. If you didn't know that, uh, make sure you keep that in your head. Make a little note and stick it up so that you remember for the rest of your life. So when people start talking about, well, I deserve this and I need that and I should get that when they aren't working to earn it or deserve it or haven't worked and, and built up their retirement. <coughs> uh, so it's something that they've earned. Uh, you can tell them with a straight face, look them straight in the eyes and say, well, let's go to Genesis 2, 15. And did you know from the very beginning, from the very first man that God created us to work? I guarantee you that will change many hearts, many minds, and uh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for this sermon going into those schools because when I work from uh, with the kids, uh, this will be on my heart. I will tell them uh, as we help them with their careers and what they're looking forward to doing the rest of their lives. Because I will I'll share this story and then we'll end the sermon, but uh, when I was at Cedar Lane before, which is like the second chance school, and I was at Oak Manor, but uh, I was sitting with a girl and she was talking to her friends and she was tired of school. She was about 16 or so and she wanted to get her own place. And so she said, well, I'm gonna get pregnant by that guy over there. Uh, I know he's not very smart and he'll never amount to anything, but uh, as soon as I get pregnant and have a kid, then I can start getting welfare checks and I can move out on my own. And so that's just one example that's the wrong heart that's the ungodliness and that's the world that we live in and so I just pray that all of you as you go forth that like I say from now on wherever you're working whatever you're doing uh, realize it's not just a job 
that as Christians, wherever we go, whatever we do, we represent God. That we are the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth. Uh, that as you paint that house, as you put that roof on, as you serve the bread, as you get the bread, uh, as you comment on Facebook, as you do anything for the glory of God that can be considered work in any way, that you are doing God's work, that you are doing kingdom work. And that when we're lazy, when we don't do what we're supposed to, when we don't do what we're called to do, or when we have bad attitudes, or when we uh, don't say and do the things that we're supposed to do, that we are showing the rest of the world uh, that this is what Christians do. And it's not what God wants. And so we're just this closing thought that as you go into this world everywhere you go any store any job any place anything you do is an opportunity to serve the lord amen and may your words and your actions always be worthy of god and glorify his kingdom so dear heavenly father we know that uh, the many people that are here watching this video the many people that are at home watching this uh, that they work that they volunteer that they interact with many, many people. And I just pray that you put it upon uh, their hearts, that it's not just a job, it's not just going somewhere, it's not just serving food, it's not just helping. But it's doing what we're called to do. We just pray that you put into our hearts the humility to know that we are always your servants, that we are always your children. And as we go forth, may the, the all Christians, but especially here at Porter's Prairie, uh, we, may we be the beautiful people that you created. May we have the joy that you have promised. May we have the love, the mercy, the respect for other people to know that no matter how short the conversation, no matter how hard the work, that you are with us and that we are doing your work for your glory in all things. Amen. So Sharon's up in visiting her son. And so the worship band's going to play the closing hymn today, which is God be with you till we meet again. So as they hustle on up here. as you are able.
your neighbor say, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Again. So I hope to see you all at 3 o'clock out at the Old Rugged Cross Church. It would be very nice. Hope to see you at Bible study on Wednesday. All you ladies have fun on your trip. School year's starting up, so pray for our kids and teachers and administrators. I don't know how much you pay attention, but some of the schools around here are on the wrong track, way on the wrong track. So stand up, be bold, speak your mind. And so uh, we'll just say our closing prayer, sing our prayer song. But isn't this just a beautiful day? And God has blessed us to be together and to enjoy his beautiful creation. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath morning, uh, the beauty that comes from you that is expressed in so many ways in the trees and the birds and the songs that the birds sing, uh, the beans, the corn, the grass, the trees, the beautiful people that are gathered here that love you and love each other. And as we go forward this week, uh, just pray that we are kingdom people that we truly seek to do your work, that we uh, hear your voice, that we go where you call us, that we serve in the ways that you call us, so we are loving and merciful the way Jesus is loving and merciful to us. And we just pray your spirit, your anointing on each person here, that they become stronger, wiser, bolder in the Lord. And we pray for our friends at home. We pray for the healing, the spiritual, the physical, the mental healing. And just know, above all things, no matter the uh, how good, how bad, and everywhere in between, that you are with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, who gave his life upon the cross, uh, so that we can be forgiven, so that we can be made whole, so that we can truly become the beautiful godly person that you created we give you him the thanks we give you the thanks the glorious father and in your name we pray amen, amen. amen. you all. Remember new members? Meet me over there in the classroom in about 10 minutes.